Hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you are tuning in, thank you for joining me. Um, hit the like and subscribe button down below. I wanted to talk to you today about a couple things. Um, a lot of the states are reopening and they're coming up with ways to reopen these salons and barber shops. So I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about what it's going to be like when we go back into the salons, both for clients and for technicians. Um, first of all, if you are a client, know that we love you with all our hearts and we are so grateful for you. You are what keep us going every single day and you guys are what give us the opportunity to provide for our families and we appreciate that so much. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up of what to expect when you go back into the salon because you all want your hair done or your nails done or your waxing or your massage or whatever is on your your list of things to take care of yourself to do. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I've been doing some studying and researching and I just wanted to educate and use this video to educate people a little bit about what to expect in the upcoming days, months, weeks, whatever it's going to be for whatever state and city that you're in. Um, for me right now, I'm still don't know when we are going back. Um, the governor said that I believe tomorrow or by the end of the week, he will have a plan laid out for us, but we will see what kind of precautions they're going to require us to do. Um, but from what we're hearing about from some other states like Georgia that's already reopened and and things is that they are limiting the amount of people that are allowed to be in a salon at a time. Um, because of the very nature of our business, it is very hard for us to keep social distancing. We can't do six feet and still do our jobs. I can't do your nails. A stylist can't do your hair. A therapist, a massage therapist cannot relax your muscles. It's just, it's physically impossible. So they're trying to come up with ways to make the spread of COVID-19 the least amount possible and still allow us to do these things. Um, I've seen where they are putting partitions in between each stylist's center. Um, some of them are drop down, um, almost like a plastic shower curtain in between each stylist so that you won't be with the other people so much. You're, it's a, a barrier. Um, they've also recommended that there's no talking at the shampoo bowl because you don't want spit um, traveling, the close contact breathing traveling from you to your client or vice versa. Um, they want you to limit the amount of time with a hair dryer because it blows the virus around the room and then it doesn't give it a chance to fall to the ground. Um, and if you think about a hair dryer in a salon, you, you can watch it fly stuff through the air for fun if you're, you know, if you feel like it. Um, as a nail tech, they're talking, I've seen where they're putting plastic partitions, like a plexiglass partition up in between um, the nail tech and the client as almost like a sneeze guard. Hate that idea, oh my God. I mean, our business is so personal. I hate to feel that disconnected from my client. And if we have to do that, I'm telling you right now, that's gonna suck. And I'm not going to like it. And I'm going to look for every other way I can to not do that. To find a way to protect people. Because oh, I, I just hate it. I just hate it. If you don't like it, leave a comment down below too. Because I, I can't think that I'm the only person that wants to do this. I've also heard that for hairstylists, not only um, do all the stylists need to wear masks, nail tech, hairstylists, etc., etc. But they want them to wear face shields while they're working, which then gets covered with hairspray and is hot. And then they're breathing in constant, not enough oxygen back and forth and more 
carbon dioxide and then you get into a whole nother slew of things that the nurses say aren't very good for your health. So in turn, don't think that for one minute, if you are walking into our salon, that we are going to be able to just squeeze you in. That's not going to happen for some time because with all the extra protective gear that they want us to wear, all the extra cleaning measures that they want us to take, we have to have time to decompress. We have to have time to clean in between each client. We've got to have some time to get those masks off our face and breathe some fresh air. We have to walk outside and get some sunshine just to regroup before the next person walks in the door. Um, your stylist may very well have to limit the amount of people that they do per day. Even though some of us have been off work for, shoot, by the time I go back to work, it's going to be at least 10 weeks of being off at a minimum. And I'm not going to be able to fit everybody in. I'm going to have to schedule my day so that I am not exhausting myself. Because if I get exhausted, then that lowers my immune system. And if um, Susie Homemaker decides she wants to come in and get her nails done, and she's not feeling real good, but girl, she's been without her nails, this whole COVID virus thing, and she she just needs to get them done, and she's going to go anyway because she doesn't feel good, but she needs her nails done to make her feel better. But I'm busting my ass to make sure that you guys get in. And if Susie Homemaker shows up to my desk sick, oh, there's going to be some fighting going on. Don't do that to us, please. If you are sick, stay home. We are going to be stretching ourselves thin. Um... Physically, we're going to be drained. Mentally, we're going to be drained. It's going to be difficult for us. I know that it's been difficult for you too. So tr please try and have some compassion both ways. We will have compassion for you if you have compassion for us. It's called being human, being nice, being kind. Do it. Do it. Um, the other thing that I want clients to be aware of is that we are going to experience increased costs for getting the proper supplies together in order to keep everyone safe. Um, I am currently looking into an air purification system that is specifically uh, for viruses as well as dust and germs and bacteria. Um, but for my small area, it's still a $200 unit. But if that's what it takes to keep people safe, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, I read an article where one of the hairstylists, because of the amount of sanitation that is being required now, she has to keep three sets of implements ready to go. And she swaps them out during the course of the day to keep them clean. Do you guys know how much this stuff costs? Some of their shears, like if they're having to swap out shears during the day and they've got to buy more shears oh good lord have mercy uh-uh no 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 mm -mm. like stylists with their shears you don't touch their shears that's like touching my nail drill back off don't touch it mm -mm, not gonna happen and if i gotta have more than one of those so that i can keep it disinfected in between thankfully mine's a motorized unit so in order for me to disinfect it there's a spray that has to sit on it, but it's still, if it was something that I had to put in a, a solution for a minimum of 10 minutes in order to be sanitized and disinfected properly, then you're either going to wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes for me to do all that, or I have to have a backup pair. So we might incur additional costs where we are getting extra supplies. Um, definitely with the masks. As a nail tech, I wear a mask off and on. I don't care for them, but with the dust, it bothers my sinuses, so I do wear them off and on. And so traditionally, I wear these. If you've got a full book, how long are these going to last? You have to change it after every single client, so they go in the trash. you got to get stuff stocked up. If I have a homemade one to help, 
that has to be taken off after every person and then washed. I'm figuring even if I did five people a day, five days a week, that's 25. I need a minimum of 25 masks to get through the week. And a lot of people will do 10, 11, 12 people in a day. 10, 11, 12 by five days a week, do the math. So you're either gonna spend what, $5 on to, to purchase one of these, or you're gonna spend however much it is to purchase multiple boxes of these, and then good luck finding them and hoping that they're not all sold out because absolutely everybody is going to need them as the stores and the businesses reopen and everybody is required to wear one if you are an employee. And it is recommended if you are a patron to wear one. Which brings me to my next thing. As a client, you need to know that if we tell you, no, we can't do you, do your service for you, it very well may be because we can't get the product. It has been so difficult to get product for some people. I have been watching girls on social media asking, begging, please tell me where can I find this? Where can I find this product? Where can I, it's all sold out. It's all sold out. It's not due back in stock till May, till June. I don't know what to do. You might have to change the type of nails that you get, or you might have to go without a, a particular color in your hair until some of this stuff gets replenished and restocked to a level that we can function. And it's just like anything else. We're going to get hammered. The first probably four to six weeks, I'm going to guess, it's just going to be bombarded getting everybody back in. And when everybody for a nail person, if they needed just a fill, well, chances are they're going to need a full set now. So that's extra time and that's extra product. Haircuts probably aren't just haircuts. I know when I get back, I'm going to need the whole shebang. I'm going to need the highlight, the lowlights, the toner, the haircut, and I'm going to want the style just to make myself feel good. Like, I don't want to walk out with a wet head. I want the whole works. Um, and I am no different than anybody else out there that's coming to the salon to get stuff done. I know what I want. I know what I like. I know what I have to pay for. I'm willing to pay for it, but I'm going to have to have a little bit of sympathy because I know that my hairstylist is going to be maxed out. I know that she wants to get back to work, um, just as I do, but it's going to be a balancing act mentally, physically, emotionally. It's, it's going to be a job. Um, you as a client may also see a price increase because of the extra, um, steps that we're having to take the extra, um, protective wear that we're having to buy the smocks that sometimes you see people wear when they are doing hair or nails they're recommending that you change those out after every single person every stylist i know keeps their smock on all day and then throws it in the laundry at the end of the day now the aprons or the smocks or the capes or whatever for the client might go directly into the washing machine but not ours so now we're going to have to spend extra money to get multiples for ourselves so that we can function and make it through the day. And at the end of the day, not only do we have to deep clean, sanitize everything to get ready for the next day, even, oops, sorry, even though we have been sanitizing everything during the course of the day, in between each and every single client, every surface that you may potentially touch, we then have to go home and do all this laundry so that we can do it all over again the next day. <sighs> okay. And if we're having to do all these extra steps, then we can't do quite as many people a day, which means if I'm used to making, you know, let's just say someone makes $200 a day. Now they're only making $100 a day. Or if they're used to making $500 a day and they only make $250 a day. Your supplies are still costing you as a technician. We're still paying for supplies. In fact, we're paying for more supplies because we are now getting bombarded with extra things to do and extra supplies for sanitation needs and extra protective wear. Our rent hasn't changed. 
it may even possibly go up because the owners of the salons or the landlords of the buildings are trying to recoup their losses or any potential losses that they may have had. It's going to be interesting. So please don't be offended if we raise your prices. It's not because we're trying to be greedy. It's because we're still trying to survive and live. Because at the end of the day, this could potentially make a lot of small businesses and independent contractors, self-employed people like myself close up. Because what if we can't do this? What if at the end of the day, there's just not enough money to pay for every requirement that the law wants you to do so that people don't get this new virus that's potentially life-threatening. And I don't want to get into the politics of whether it's life-threatening or not. Please don't even comment about it because I'm, I'm not going to have that discussion with you. Some people think that it is no worse than the flu and some people think that it is terrible. I come from a different set where I think that, you know, I think that without the measures that we've already taken, it could have been substantially worse. I think we're very fortunate to have it not be as bad as it was. Um, and even at that, I still have empathy and compassion for everyone that was affected by it. I myself had to go on a short period of time where I was quarantined because one of my clients came down positive. Um, someone that I'm close to, one of my very, you know, one of my very good friends. It was the day before the governor shut down our salon that I did her nails. And even though I wear masks and she coughs or sneezes or whatever into her arm, it is what it is. It was out there and we were exposed to it. So, you know, those are all things that affect you. Um, what else? Oh, as clients, please be respectful and do not bring children to the salon. It's not that they're bad kids. It's not that. It's that they are kids. They touch things. They don't have any reasonable expectation of what six foot social distancing is. They want to ask questions. They want to touch. They want to feel. They're curious. They want to be into stuff. Um, they're they're not going to wash their hands every time they touch something. They're not going to go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Can I please have some pump sanitizer over there? And they're not going to care. They're not, you know, they're kids. And I don't want to stop a child from being a child because I have to. Because they really shouldn't be in the salon during this particular time. Um, we are being instructed to clean every single surface that a client may touch while they're there, after they're there. Mm. Please don't make me go behind and clean up after a kid. Um, just do without it. It's it's better for you. It'll give you a little downtime and make you feel better. And it's much better for us. It's less work for us. You don't think that they're extra work for us because we're not doing their nails, but we're doing their sanitation. So please just, just don't. Um, be patient with us, know that we love you, know that we're there for you. And we are doing our best to get things back to as normal as we possibly can, as quickly as we possibly can. As a technician, girls, get your shit stocked up because you're gonna need it. Don't be an idiot. Sit out there, read up on what other states are doing and as soon as your state tells you what Ohio well, for I'm in Ohio, so as soon as I hear what Ohio State Board is demanding of us, you know I'm going to be out trying to figure out how to do this. I need to get my ass back to work. I am not going to want to turn away people because I don't have everything set up the way I'm supposed to be. Newbies are at home. They are trying to figure out how to do their nails themselves online. Great. Good for them. And that doesn't phase me one way or another, except they're buying our products. <clears throat> Some of them. 
Some of them, I don't give a rat's ass what they buy. Some of it, it's like, I look at it and go, oh yeah, honey, you're using that wrong, but whatever. That's what I'm... Get your damn supplies. You're going to need it. Make sure you have enough storage containers to store your stuff in sealed containers so the state board doesn't walk in and hammer you. Make sure that you have enough towels and proper closets and cabinets to keep them in. Um, during one of my discussions with my mom, one of the things that we talked about was I keep my polish gel polish on a rack behind me. Most of the time, no one touches those but me. I have the display tips, as I'm sure many of you do. We hand them to our clients. We tell them to pick a color. We're going to have to sanitize every one of those little buzzards every time their hands are all over them. I gotta figure out a different way. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. I mean, I know they're plastic, but dang on it, I got over 200 colors, y'all. I don't wanna be wiping down 200 sticks every hour, hour and a half. You might wanna remove nail polish bottles off the wall if you have them there for people to touch. You know, get as much stuff away from your clients for them to contaminate. Um, know that your UV lights are going to burn out faster. If you're busting your ass to get back on track and you're using them a lot, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm going to start with a new light. I'm going back with new lights because I just got new lights before we shut down, but I've been doing so many classes online at home trying to be a better nail tech that I, uh, I'm not going to risk that. I'm going to get new lights before I go back. What else? I already know I got to get a bigger trash can. Because I'm going to have to be throwing away more stuff after cleaning. Probably need to take out more stock in, in paper towels. Because, you know, fly through those. Got to have more gloves. Got to have more masks. Got to have more smocks. The air purifier. That's going to be a good one. Not just a dust collector, but an air purifier. Mmm. Well, a lot of that UVC sanitizer wand things that the hospitals use, those aren't a bad investment either, I don't think. If you're really trying to protect your clients, you know, educate yourself. Don't be a fool. Educate yourself. Get some brains. Go watch some stuff. Go read some stuff. And figure out what you need to do for the safety of yourself and your clients so you can stay working so they cannot be sick and keep coming to you. Because we don't like cancellations because they're sick. Because that means we don't get paid. But we also don't want them to come see us when they're sick because we don't want to get sick. Uh, pay attention to your books. Don't overwork yourself, girls, guys. Keep your, your books manageable. Schedule time for yourself. We've been off for a long time. That's like a runner who quits doing training every day. It's going to be exhausting going back to work. Be prepared for that. Don't overwhelm yourself. Take time for you. Take time, like I said in the beginning of the video. Go out and get some fresh air. Breathe. Take the stupid masks off for a little bit. Inhale some oxygen. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Wonderful for you. Take time for yourself. Because if we're not at the top of our game, we're going to get frustrated. We're going to get upset. And we're going to bring that with us at work. And it's just going to be a hot fucking mess. And we're going to have to try and figure that out. And we're going to be emotional. And if you're like me, I'm reaching 50 and my hormones are probably all out of whack anyway. So that's not any fun. So let's just keep those to a minimum, girls. Um, I hope that some of the things that I've said here today help you think about your trip to the salon in a little bit different manner. Like I said, I love you. I want you guys to come to the salon. We want to be back in the salon, but let's do it smart. Some of the things that we don't always think about, we're going to have to think about. Um, I know when I've told some of my girls, listen, it's not that I don't want to see you, but I need to make sure I have product. And if I do not have product, I cannot do you. And there were like, oh, we didn't think about that. Communicate with your clients, ladies, guys, keep them informed, keep them up to date. They don't know what it's like to be on our side of the seat. They're not used to it. They don't know the ins and outs of our daily business. 
And the last thing that I want to tell you is let this time be a learning experience for you. A lot of us went into this unprepared. We did not have enough savings built up. A lot of us are self-employed, which means that we don't usually qualify for unemployment. How's that working for you right about now? How's that working? Were you one of those people that had enough money to live off of? so that you're not financially struggling to pay your bills and put food in your house and take care of your kids and pay your mortgage? Or were you one of those that's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? It's a good opportunity for us to change it. When we go back, find a new normal for you. Find a new way of running your business so that you have a better outcome the next time something unexpected hits. If you have to have a surgery, if something happens and you're unable to work, if God forbid a fire takes out the building that you're in, who knows, whatever the reasons are, get yourself something put back, be financially responsible so that this does not hammer you the next time. Sometimes we learn lessons the hard way, but as long as we learn the lesson, then it's a positive and we still want to be better at the end of the day. So I really strongly encourage people to make that a priority during this time. Clients, be respectful of the area. Limit the people that you come in with and know that if you already have a nail, crazy nail tech, she's probably going to be even crazier when you get back and just love her through it anyway. Know that we are doing everything that we can. Techs, educate yourselves. Know what you're in for. Don't be blindsided when it's time to go back. Love your clients and explain to your clients that this is not a personal thing. If you have to raise your prices, make sure that they know that this is strictly math. It's not an emotional, hey, I wanna buy a new purse, hey, I wanna go on vacation more. This is just the numbers. They have to work. In a business, your numbers have to work. So that's all I have to say for right now. I think I've covered everything that I kind of wanted to touch on today. So I hope that this helps you. I hope that you learn something from it. I hope that you go out and you educate yourself more. And as soon as we can get back in the salons, have a great time. Be the best tech stylist, therapist, massage therapist, esthetician, whatever you are. Be the best that you can be at it. Take this time to work on your skills so that when you go back, you're ready to rock it. Have a good night, everybody. It was great talking to you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Uh, hit like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. I wanna be able to connect with more people and share my 20 years of knowledge with you and my journey and hopefully, hopefully help someone else along the way become better at what they do. Um, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.